Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. I really end stage liver. How many different ways can you come up with, can you list, that a liver can become infected? You can either draw with arrows, or you can just list one, two, three, four, five. Just right. Yeah, so definitely by blood. So that's when you get your embolic showering. It's a form of damage, like trauma. That's an infection. <laughs> trauma. Cirrhosis is where you get that fibrosis and the nodules. Yeah, so it's you. Probably, I would think. It's bigger. Take another minute. But we're not done yet with a different color. Oh, a different color. Or you show me how the bile. How does, what's the movement of bile? In the other direction, oh, you can change it to it? green, how convenient. <laughs> See if you can get a different color and demonstrate that for me. Oh, look at that. Christmas Ours is anatomically correct. It has blood and red <laughs> and bile and green. Blood and red and bile and green. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Doing good. This is my veterinary pathology classroom. Students are engaged. There is active discussion and banter during lecture. How did we get here? Let's go back a few weeks earlier. The veterinary students appear bored and distant today. Many of them have been missing class as well. They indicate that they learn better by reviewing PowerPoint slides and reading notes from the class. However, many students still claim that didactic lecture is valuable to their learning. So in summary, there are four types of vagal indigestion, which is decreased function of the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, and ultimately this can affect the function of the abomasum and four stomachs in the cow. So, are there any questions? Is anyone listening? Bueller? Bueller? What do millennial students need? They prefer a variety of learning methods. They do not typically value information for information's sake. Learning outcomes and activities must be relevant and practical. They need a rationale for what they are learning. How is this information useful to my career as a veterinarian? They prefer less formal learning environments. And they prefer to work in groups and to interact with their instructors. They enjoy it when their instructors show interest in them. My dilemmas in the lecture room include, is lecture really necessary? Do I understand the millennial student? Do my colleagues care about this issue? So, what is my role as an instructor? Someone who fills the students' brains with facts and figures to be spewed out on an examination and later forgotten? Oh, I can't handle that pressure. Am I an entertainer? Someone who uses visuals, humor, and music to maintain student engagement? At 97, Brendan Kelly, one yard game playing second down. Or am I a coach who mediates the learning process and then watches it unfold? Maybe I'm a little bit of all these things. Millennials seem to like to work in groups, and use of group learning methods seems to work in my pathology lab. For example, I have students work in groups to create three-dimensional models of intestinal and respiratory diseases, allowing them to exhibit their creativity along with their understanding of the topic, not just to me, but to one another. Can we apply this model of group learning in the veterinary lecture room? First, students must prepare in advance. There is accountability. Students must interact with the instructor, and students should be able to teach each other. How can technology help me to accomplish this? I introduced portable electronic whiteboards called MobiViews. We used these to provide brain breaks during lecture. A brain break is a planned interruption in a lecture so students can look at the lecture topic in a different way. 
Four students are assigned per whiteboard prior to lecture. Students are required to attend class or risk loss of points. This is important because they are responsible to their group mates. The teams of veterinary students work off their specific whiteboard image that is projected on the screen in the front of the lecture room. A maximum of nine whiteboard images can be projected at one time. After three to four minutes of discussion, the instructor steps in and highlights one or two of the best answers. So a team knows that their responses will be shared with the entire class. There is accountability. This gives the instructor the opportunity to analyze and discuss a particular selection of answers, providing instant feedback to the class. The Mobi views, as opposed to iClickers, allowed us to ask more challenging questions than just multiple choice. And Mobi views provide a format for teams of students to work together to express their ideas and concepts of pathology. Examples of this are circling the lesion in a histological section, listing the outcomes or causes of a particular disease, and piecing together the stages of a disease process. Our instructors are comparing student engagement in lecture with and without electronic whiteboards. Now we are back to where my story began. The instructor must be willing to reduce some of the lecture content to provide time for whiteboard brain breaks. And students must be held accountable to come up with some of the information on their own while teaching each other. So, are the electronic whiteboards working? We made some assumptions, but found that not all students are technology savvy. Not all students want to escape from lecture. Not all students appreciate conversation instead of lecture. And not all students can be satisfied with the same teaching approach. That's why there's both chocolate and vanilla ice cream. But many students do enjoy working with the Moby Views. Many students enjoy the interactive concept in the classroom. Many students appreciate the chance to stop, think, and discuss what is being presented in the classroom. Many students enjoy the opportunity to discuss and answer questions that require higher level thinking. That type of learning makes an instructor's effort worthwhile. My use of the electronic whiteboard is a work in progress, but an end of term survey of 100 veterinary students indicated that 75% of the students enjoyed the use of the MobiView Brain Breaks to replace time that would be used for lecture. And what I find significant is that 85% of the students think that the use of the MobiView allowed the instructor to pose more challenging or thoughtful questions compared to the use of iClicker multiple choice questions. And 89% of the students thought that instructor discussion on each MobiView question was helpful in understanding the material presented on that day. And that's a good start. Thank you.